and I'm pouring out on you in greater measure. Oh, can't you feel it? I told you I'd come through. I told you I'd come through. Why would you worry? And why would you worry for a moment? And why would you worry? I've always got you. I've always got you.
trôi 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 in the father trôi in the son and trôi in the holy spirit it's time to have fun again it's time to have fun again But it's time, it's time to arise and shine. It's time, it's time to arise and shine. Oh, awaken, come awaken, come awaken, come awaken. I hear him say, I've heard you say, I'm a little too old for this and that. And he's saying, I'm giving you new strength. I'm giving you new strength Cause it's never too late to get started It's never too late to get started What is time to me? What is time to me? Don't you see? I hold time It's never too late, 
It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. Why not now? And why not here? It's never too late. 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 Why not now? And why not? It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. The Father is calling. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. The Father is calling. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. The Father is calling to you. He say, if you just get out of the boat you will walk on the water just come to me just come to me if you just get up if you just walk out cause it's never too late it's never too late i'll make a way and he says that this is my favorite part to do is make a way, make a way, make a way, make a way for you. This is my favorite part to do where it looks like there could be no way. And I rush in and make a way for you. This is my favorite part that I blow your mind. And I do the impossible thing If you just move with me Just come and move with me I will make a way I will make a way I have made a way I have made a way for you And I have made a way All oh, the ways, Jesus, Jesus Just call on his name, call on his name Cause I have made a way And I have made a way for you and I have made a way oh it's Jesus cause I have made a way and I have made a way for you
And um, well, it's good to be in sunny Orlando, Florida area for the first conference of 2022. You might as well know this. Warrior Notes is not slowing down at all. Amen. And uh, the, the plans uh, that God has for Warrior Notes, the plans that he has for you, they're good. And there's so many things in store. I'm telling you, it just keeps getting better. And I find that when you serve God faithfully, it does truly keep getting better. And the, the things that are in store that God has spoke to Kevin and Kathy about for this ministry and where we're going this year and You'll be seeing more and more places. We're going to places this year that we've never, Kevin and Kathy have not been yet. And so we're pretty excited about that. But uh, thank you for being a part. Thank you for coming. We still have a few seats left up front. If you, Rachel, if you would help me, if you're a single mom with little kiddos at home or maybe teenagers, we have some front row seats for you. You just feel free to come on up. Rachel will help you. We have about six or seven over here. Just come on up, get a front row seat. And he said, yeah, come on up, come on up. Any single moms and just have a seat. That'd be great. Get a front row seat. And uh, we're so thankful for you. Are you happy to be here? I mean, it's going to be something else. And uh, we're having a good time. And in a moment, we're going to take an offering. But I just want to welcome you. And uh, I understand there's a number of people that are involved with our Warrior Fellowship Center here. And... Just to reiterate, when you're a student in our school ministry, yeah, just come on up. Rachel, just help them find a seat. We have some over here and over here in the corner, Rachel. Let's give single moms a hand, amen? Amen. (laughs) You even got the shofar on that one. By the way, if, if you're watching this online, and you didn't even know about this, we are in the Orlando air area. Be here. We're all here all day tomorrow and, and Sunday morning. So please be here. Come, drive, be a part of what God's doing. But we, we have what is called Warrior Fellowships. If you're a student, we ask our students, we, which we have almost 25,000 students now in our school of ministry, we ask them if they want to host a Warrior Fellowship. And, and when they do that, it's like a Bible study uh, souped up with Kevin and Kathy teaching what God has laid on their heart. And we have people even here from Cleveland that came all the way to Orlando. They have a Warrior Fellowship. There, there she is over there. Any other Warrior Fellowship people here? Wave your hand. Thank you for all you, thank you for all you people that are involved with Warrior Fellowships. And if you want to be a part of a Warrior Fellowship in your city, uh, all you have to do is log on online to kevinzadai.com and you can see up there where there's a link that you can find a Warrior Fellowship in your area. These, we're seeing so many testimonies. I mean, I'm not making this up. People are getting saved, filled with the Spirit, demons flying out. They're, they're, we have a lot, of our, a lot of our people, per Kevin and Kathy's heart, we have a lot of our people, most all the fellowships are reaching out to the lost. Not only are they reaching out to the lost, but they're starting their own food pantries. They're going to homeless shelters. They're finding people under bridges. They're finding single moms. They're taking up offerings. I mean, we're changing the world, whether the devil likes it or not. And so we're really excited about that. But before we actually take the offering, Kevin wanted to share something. Thank you for coming tonight. Amen. Um, I'm not going to come down yet because there's still some more announcements. We've got to get rid of get get rid of them. Get a, you know, but I, I wanted to share something with you because over this last month, I've been just sitting at home studying with Kathy and uh, doing a, a lot of uh, things with the aircraft, getting ready to become a captain on my aircraft, and then I I was studying, and I wanted to share something right off the bat. The Lord said. Um, you're really robbing the people if you don't give them the opportunity to give. That's what he said to me. And you know me, I'm like, you know, if you don't want to give, don't give, but I'm still coming back to your city anyway. And, and I'm, I don't skimp on you because you can see we don't skimp on where we go. And we do it excellent. We own all of our equipment. We, we do everything with excellence. We're out. We don't have no debt. We have no debt. Amen. So... But he, he instructed me, and I told Ryan, I said, you know, I never take the offering. I never want to talk about uh, that. I, I just, the partners take care of everything. Everything is paid already. 
But the Lord said, do not take away the opportunity of the people to give. Okay, because, because Paul said in 2 Corinthians in chapter 9, that is my platform for giving. And Paul says, listen, this isn't for me. This is for your benefit that you give. That's what he said. He said, you shouldn't do it out of compulsion. In fact, he took the offering before he came. He said, just, just so there's no uh, twisting of the arms and making people manipulating. That's what I'm just going to say it. How many of you have been manipulated by offerings? I have. And I felt like my wallet, my wallet uh, should stay home. So what Kathy and I would do is we would actually determine ahead of time because we knew that our wallets were going to get yanked out of our pockets. We actually like, we actually just looked at each other and said, okay, pray in tongues. And we predetermined before Paul, the apostle came to our city, (laughs) we took the offering. (laughs) We determined in our heart, not out of compulsion. We did it in joy. We prayed in tongues until we started laughing, and then I'd say, okay, here's what I got. This is what we're going to give this this, uh, man or woman of God. And she goes, that's what I got too. We, We have very few times, I'm talking thousands and thousands, not of dollars, thousands and thousands of offerings, we have picked the same number, up to $50,000 one time, which is really not even in my calculator, if you know what I mean. You know, we all think, okay, you know, we want to tip somebody, you know. But God said, no, it's going to be $50,000. And I thought, well, you just tell Kathy that. (laughs) And and then I'll know that this is you. So Kathy went on the treadmill and um, started praying in tongues. And she got off. She goes, it's $50,000. I go, oh, just. (laughs) I'm doing this because I'm identifying with all of you. I never want to be like what has happened to me all my life. And as I I dread, I dread the offering. (laughs) So so let's just be honest. Paul said, listen, take the offering, you know, before I come or, you know, give out of the love that you have for God and do it with joy. Do it because God wants you to do it and that you love God and you want to give into what God's doing. Okay, so I I felt like I have to do this. The Lord instructed me from now on, you're going to say this every meeting. I'm like, no. (laughs) But I want to release you just to obey God. I I don't want, you know, we don't, we don't, um, we're not, we're not hurting. And we just went through an historical time in the world. Historical. It'll be talked about forever. And we prospered through that because we sowed in famine and we reaped a hundredfold, just like Isaac. Nothing has stopped. I still preach healing for the last two years. I preached all good news. Amen. Because the gospel works anywhere, anytime. So what's in your wallet? No, do you, do you see, I see my, in my wallet, in my wallet is, is the evidence that I and Kathy and we, that Warrior Notes sowed in famine and we reaped a hundredfold. This last year, we paid for three vans for the, the, uh, the kids' ranch. They got three vans. They've got, we gave them a check just recently to build another home because they need another home. And... And I know they're watching, and um, the Lord has spoken to me about something else. We're we're, going to do a whole bunch of things for that ranch, you know. So anyway, I have to say that. I have to also tell you that according to the Spirit of the Lord, every student should have a fellowship. Should be, every student should be sitting and teaching the Bible. So to me... There should be not 1,400 fellowships all over the world. There should be 25,000. Why? Because there's 25,000 students. See, this is the way I think. I think think propagation. I think birth. I think inheritance. I think handing off, impartation. It's time for the body of Christ to fulfill its... 
her mission on the earth. It's a bride. And it's time. And we can do this. We are doing it. Amen? Okay, I'm going to hand it back. I'm going to hand it back uh, to these guys. And they're going to do their thing. And then we're going to get into the teaching. But there is no reason why anyone shouldn't leave this place tonight without their package from heaven. The Holy Spirit's here right now. I mean, I'm coming down with a healing as I'm talking. I mean, I'm coming down with a healing right now. And that foul disease has never been able to even spit on me, kiss on me. Why? Because Psalms 91 is my insurance policy. God signed it. I signed it. My wife signed it. It's our insurance policy. If it didn't work, it is not God's fault. When I get sick, I never blame God. Ever. It's a fallen world. It's a broken world. Everybody, everybody, let's say this. Jesus came back to save us from this broken world. Say it. Don't you think you could sit with him and work this out? Come let us reason together. So tonight we are going to Jesus about our healing. Amen? Okay. Amen. And when Kevin says that these are all over the world, he means all over the world. I just got a, um, an email from Ireland and they said, pray for us because, you know, the government, this and that. But uh, the, it's a powerful fellowship. We have one in the Hebrides. We have one. Uh, we have a few in a country. You figure it out yourself in a country I can't even talk about because they, they can't even see it. And we have several of them there. We have, I, I get uh, emails on a regular basis from our uh, fellowships in India where there's a makeshift hut and there's all these precious children and people, however they do it, they're huddling around a little TV and they're watching Kevin and Kathy and they're reaching their whole village for the gospel. Now listen, if people in India can do that, you can do that in Orlando or Cleveland or North Carolina or wherever, Amen. So you can do your part, I can do my part. That's what this is all about, all right? Ushers, if you come forward, that'd be great. If you're making out a check, you can make it out to Warrior Notes. If you're giving online, there should be a number on there. You can do text to give. We really appreciate that. And I'm gonna pray for this offering. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give as Kevin had shared, Lord. It's an honor to give. We count it a privilege to give into your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to sow and do what is right in our own heart. And Lord, we bless you. And we thank you that you're going to take this precious seed, Lord, and you're going to use it for your glory. And Lord, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ushers. Man, I just want to get out of the way and let Kevin talk after all that. But uh, I'm so excited. I'll tell you, uh, I hope you came hungry because the table's been set and there's plenty of food for everybody. <laughs> Nobody should be leaving hungry, amen? And so we always want to pause and take a moment because all this that you see, the simulators for the kids, um, the music, did you enjoy the kids helping with worship tonight? Wasn't that incredible? Well, it started, it started because partners started joining, and then Kevin said, let's start giving all these kids instruments, and let's start developing all this. And so you're going to see more and more of this happening. We've got the art. There's so much happening in the spirit world right now, and it, want to, it wants to manifest in your life. Isn't that awesome? So we want to stop and just thank the partners, because it's you guys that are ones that are getting behind warrior notes, not just in prayer, but also with your support. And so tonight, there was no charge for anybody. Matter of fact, I think everybody should have got a study guide and a CD. Did everybody get their study guide? So you can thank a partner for that. And so we appreciate you guys. You guys are incredible. And we are changing this generation together. So thank you for linking up and partnering with Warrior Notes. Kevin and Kathy pray for you guys every single day. They are the most prayerful people I've ever met in my whole life. And so it's so wonderful to have all you partners here tonight. We're believing for an impartation and from a fresh touch from heaven. Amen. So in addition to that, we've got 25,000 students all over the world. So how many are here tonight in Orlando? 
Hey, you guys should be loud. You should be really loud. <laughs> Let me tell you, God is moving in incredible ways, and it comes through discipleship. It comes through investing. You know, you have to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took a hold of us. And sometimes that means you got to put your hand out on that mouse and click start on your course. <laughs> See what I did there? That was pretty good, right? That was a dad joke. Anyways, we're so excited that you students are here because we want you taking notes. We want you receiving from heaven. And then no matter if you're at the grocery store, if you're at your fellowship, if it's prayer time with your family, no matter what, you are taking what you're receiving and you're imparting it. You're giving away, right? Freely you receive. Freely you want to give that out. And by the way, Kevin has just come out with a new course that I'm ecstatic. Ecstatic. Can I say that again? Ecstatic about. That's a great word, ecstatic, like electricity about. And that is prayer strategies of a warrior. And I'm telling you what, yeah, you could give him a big clap for that. This course, he's invested a lot of everything he's learned and he saw in heaven and what him and Kathy have implemented in their lives. So this is how they live. This is who they are. And if you want to know how you can walk in this, because you can, and dare I say that you should be, you need to go after it in prayer. And so I want to encourage you, whether you're watching online or here, after this weekend, you have to then take the next step, and that's enrolling in a course, and that's continuing your discipleship. That's continuing your growth in God, right? So I want to encourage you, right now we have that, cor that course half off, and we've got a few other specials we're going to talk to, about, uh, talk to you guys about probably this weekend. I'm not going to spill it all in the first, first session, but I want to encourage you guys, go after God. Now is your time. Now is your season. Don't miss your moment. Amen? Amen. All right, Dr. Kevin Zadai. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen, um, this is not a religious service. So um, you, need, you need to be comfortable in the presence of the Lord, and you need to, you need to allow the Spirit to speak to you this weekend. This is, this, is your, this is your opportunity to enter. You need to sit at the table of the Lord and partake of everything He has. Just don't, just don't pick one item. There's plenty of healing and deliverance and uh, provision for you at this table. There's wisdom understanding is coming to you and we need to engage God not only in the good times but in the bad times too we need to engage God and we need to give him an opportunity to show himself strong he, he loves you and I've I've had so many wonderful things happen over this last month so many wonderful visitations and uh, words from God and so many things have been done. I, uh, I literally, literally did a course that I want to announce tonight. We, you know, we, we announced that we were going to do uh, start a school of music. And um, there was, there's 39 departments. We've, we're working on half of them secretly, so don't tell anybody. But <laughs> we... We are reaching every avenue, every area of your life through these, these ministries. And music and worship is very important to God. And so all last year, we're tallying up how many instruments we gave away. I know that we gave away just in the last two cities, except for Tampa was the last city, so not including Tampa. We gave away 63 instruments between Houston and Georgia, Dalton, Georgia. We gave away 63 <laughs> instruments just in those two cities, 13 saxophones Yay. and cellos and violins because I was sewing into the music ministry. I, I, uh, I sewed a really nice bass, nicer than I had, 
so I went and got one too, but <laughs> I sewed one into Caesar because I believed that someday he would play for us. Yes. Well, you saw what happened. Yeah. I told him, I said, okay, you concentrate on these two keys, and I said, I'm going to launch you. I'm going to launch you, and I said, you get ready for Orlando. And he practiced and practiced and practiced. And all those kids, all those instruments, I don't know how many drum sets. And uh, I know we gave out probably 50 or 60 flutes in Tampa. But they're all coming back. You're going to see them on the stage. You're, they're coming back. They're coming back. What you sow is going to come back. And I sowed in the kids because we want this music department to become the worship for the services. So we're training kids. We're going to train the kids. We, we, we have pallets of food that's been shipped. to. We ship them to every city from now on, starting this year, starting here. And we're going to have kids giving out food to people that need food. We're stuck right here. We, we bought a big truck. It says Warrior Notes on it. Amen. And, and Pastor Sixto and Susan, they're here from Tampa, and, and they have decided to become one of our warrior churches. So, so if, you want, if you want to go to a warrior church, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be there every month, almost every month. I'll be there ministering and training people to go into the ministry uh, at, at Tampa. Uh, so Pastor Sixto and Susan, stand up. Uh, they've, they've decided the Lord has spoken to them to join us. Amen. So they're helping us with the food uh, so that we can have pallets of food in every city that we go. Um, we, we, have, we, we have launched this music to, uh, program. So what has happened is the Lord gave this to me over Christmas. And so here it is. It's just amazing. how It's in your spirit. Next thing you know, next month it's in your hand. So here we have this study guide. This will be for Phoenix next month. We're going to be talking about creative worship. So here's the study guide that you'll get if you come to Phoenix. And then here is the impartation CD. And because I had a couple extra minutes during Christmas, I made a seven CD set on it too as well. Okay, so this, if, if I can do this as a flight attendant praise in tongues, you can do this too. You can do this. You can write books. You can write music. I don't know if you understand what just happened, but what you just heard here, that 40 minutes, that will be an album next month. Every service, every service, we produce the album of the month. We choose out of all the services, and you will be able to get that album. It'll be called Live from Orlando. And we're going to be, we're going to be taking the kids, and we're going to be putting them up there, and they're going to be... I mean, who do you know that's 10 or 12, 15 years old that's on an album? But Jesus can do that. Oh, we're just getting started. I haven't even started the second engine on the jet yet. We're just on one engine. You watch what happens. The Lord wants to show himself faithful to you. And if he has to grab a flight attendant and a hairdresser to prove to you that you can do this. Amen? Amen. Why are you all looking at me so serious? <laughs> this is the way it's going to be. I mean, there's people getting healed right now. You don't even know it, but you're, there's, there's backs that are straightening up right now. I mean, right now, they're, right now, there's spines. You're feeling like hot honey rolling down your back. That's the healing power of God. We haven't even gotten started yet, but God, he just, he just can't wait. He can't, he can't wait to be good. He can't wait to be good. His goodness passed by, and Moses is up in heaven still talking about it. Amen? Okay. Did I cover everything? All right. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. I'm not going to open the study guide yet. I have some things that I got to go around and beat the bushes and get the demons out. 
I got I to gotta kill some sacred cows. Do some cow tipping. <laughs> Numbers 14, 20, it says, Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, and as ye have spoken in my ears, so I will do for you. That's it. It doesn't matter what disease of the week we're on. Echo, Delta, whatever Greek God is next. It doesn't matter to God. Don't you think when he was talking to Moses and he said, tell them this. Don't you think he saw in the future? When Jesus was hanging on the cross, do you think that he was making sure with the Father that everything that he had gone through would even defeat Delta? And I'm not talking about the airline. They have their own problems. Okay. The Knox translation says, tell them this. As I am a living God, that Lord says the very words you have used in my hearing shall come true. Okay. So as I'm reading this, do you feel like correction coming to your spirit? Because you've been through a lot. You've been through a lot of trauma. But... This gospel has to be able to work and be preached at any time in any nation, whether good or bad situations, whether you're in jail writing a letter to the Ephesians or whether you are in Orlando at a healing conference. It's got to work. Oh, that's hard on my teeth. These are brand new. All right, well, I'll just have those fillings checked later, but there's a chance they shifted in my, my mouth. The Jerusalem translation of this, say unto them, as I live, it is Yahweh who speaks. I will deal with you according to the very words you have used in my hearing. Okay, so let's not talk about what's in your wallet. Let's talk about what's on your lips. Let's talk about what's coming out of your mouth first. Because if you're repeating the news, it may be fake. All right. That was my introduction to my introduction. Okay. Now that I took that out, just one shot, one kill. We're going to... We're going to go ahead and cancel the devil's reservation for tonight. I'm sorry, small g God, but... We have no record of your reservation, you, and, and we're full. Register early next year. Okay. Here's the mentality of the Jesus that you accepted, that you love and you adore. Here is the mentality of Jesus. He came as a servant. He didn't consider being equal with God as being grasped. But he became a servant and he came among us and walked among us and he corrected demons. He said, shut up when they called him son of God. He wanted to be known as a son of man. He wanted to be a servant to everyone. Now, in order to say at the end of his ministry, hey, by the way, y'all, you're going to be doing what I'm doing. Can you imagine the Messiah saying that to the people in Jerusalem. He's saying, listen, not only are you going to do what I'm doing, you're going to do greater things than these. Amen. Okay, now he couldn't say that as a son of God. It wouldn't work. Because we're never going to be the son of God. We can be a son through inheritance. So he had to come 
as one of us. That's the whole temptation in the desert. The temptation in the desert is very confusing. But I'm going to help you out here and take care of a couple of bushes that have demons in them in your life where you, you're, you're just not fully convinced. See, in order to receive healing this weekend, you got to be fully convinced of who Jesus is and why he came. He took care of the whole thing. He's not coming back. There is no amendment to the amendment. There's no amendment to the document. He completed. He said, tell us, die. Paid in full. It's finished. That means he isn't coming back for recurrent, for an update. He's not coming back to clean up maybe those things that didn't get covered in the policy. Okay? Just like Moses. One pass. One pass was enough. Moses was undone. He wrote Psalms 90. He wrote Psalms 91. It says it right there. It's on the internet. internet. It must be true. <laughs> no, it's, it's in the document. Okay, listen. The temptation of Jesus. Please sit back, relax. Make sure your hands are duct taped to your handlebars because we're going to go. <laughs> we're going to go through this. We're going to destroy those false ideas that lift themselves up and exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. We're going to bring them into captivity. We're going to be a little rough with them. We're going to be rough. We're going to incarcerate and arrest these things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. We're going to bring them into captivity. To the obedience of Christ. That's what warfare is. Spiritual warfare according to Paul. If you want to bring him into it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he said the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal or fleshly, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And everybody stops there and we, we write warfare books. Spiritual warfare. Okay, so we're going to wrestle with demons. But if you read on, he says we're going to bring into captivity and pull down every thought to the obedience of Christ. Anything that exalts itself, peeks its head up over, and exalts itself above the knowledge that, that has already been given to us by the Spirit through the apostles. And I ain't one of them. I ain't one of those that built the foundation. Those have already laid the foundation, those apostles. The prophets have already spoken. They laid the foundation. So the New Testament fivefold ministry is to build us up in the unity of the faith until we reach maturity. But the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament at the inception of the church, like Paul, they laid the foundation. So what Paul was saying, listen, I've already taught you doctrine. If anything exalts itself above the knowledge of God that has been given to me through revelation on the mountain of God in Arabia where he was caught up and disappeared for years. And he said, I didn't speak to anybody. I, didn't, I wasn't taught by anyone. I got this from Jesus Christ myself, he said. Okay, he's saying now, if anything is said, anything, even if an angel comes, he said, if it doesn't match the doctrine that has been laid as the foundation, he said, you got to take it and pull it down, cuff it and take it off, incarcerate it. I mean, do the word studies. I just did a, like three hours for you right there. But you can do it too. I mean, you can, you can look up a Strong's number. They're just four, four digits. You got five hands. I mean, five fingers on your hand. You got five hands. You're a hybrid. I need to talk to you. Okay. All right. So then Jesus, full of the spirit. Okay. Jesus. Full of the Spirit. Jesus, full of the Spirit. Did I mention full of the Spirit? Okay. Return from the Jordan River. Okay, so he's just baptized. Baptized in water and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Jesus himself. Yeah. Yep. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Okay, whoa. The Spirit led him into temptation. So it says, if you want to bring the Bible into it. So what are you worried about? 
What are you worried about? These last two years, you traumatized? Let's work through it tonight. Let's work through this. If Jesus said we can do the same things that he did, and even greater, then we should start by letting God heal our hearts tonight. Listen, anyone that studies history, this three-ring circus that we have watched, it's always been going on. It just has different elephants and different jugglers, <laughs> different people on unicycles for 47 years, and nothing's changed. Make America great again. If you can't do it in 47 years, you might want to step aside. Okay? But Jesus comes. And he is led by the Spirit into the desert. It's, this is all key. It's all key. Because he was, he was, everything that he encountered, he was replaying everything that man had gone through. So everything that he went through in his ministry is exactly what Israel went through. That's why he had to go to Egypt and hide from Herod. Because he had to go to Egypt so he can come out like the Israelites did. He had to cross the Jordan just like they did. He had to fulfill all righteousness. He had to be baptized in the Jordan. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that there is the Trinity. And it's such a huge argument. But when I was in heaven, I had no argument about what was going on up there. Never had one question about the Trinity. I'm seated with Christ. He's seated with me. He told me I can sit in that throne. He said, everyone that overcomes and is victorious will sit with me on a throne. He was quoting the Revelation chapter 2 and 3 where he's talking to the churches. He said, he who overcomes. Paul, Ephesians chapter 2. Talks about being seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. Colossians chapter 3 says the same thing. Seated with him, setting our, our minds on things above, not on earthly things. He's telling us to be spiritually minded Amen. so that we're earthly good. Amen. Okay, so Jesus crosses the Jordan. He, he gets John to baptize him in the Jordan. As the Son of God, Jesus, steps into the water, the Spirit of God visibly comes upon him, hovers on him, lights on him like a dove. He's not a dove. He's not a bird. The Holy Spirit is not a bird. <laughs> the Holy Spirit came upon him, came down and hovered like a dove, like a bird. Okay, so Jesus is there, and here comes the Holy Spirit right in front of everybody, and a voice out of heaven, the Father spoke and said, This is my Son, in whom I love and I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And people still have questions about if there's a trinity or not. <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> I hear the clicking of heels. There's no place like home. Well, think about it. You've got to pull down every false doctrine. That account proves there's a trinity because Jesus wasn't throwing his voice. This was not the Muppets. This was not like... <laughs> this is how deception happens. And this is how it gets into the church, into the body of Christ. And we waste time with things that have already been proven. Okay, so Jesus was tempted. He went into the desert, led by the Spirit. The, the Spirit's sanctioning this. It's, it's, it's all controlled by the Spirit of God. He's tempted by the devil for 40 days. I mean, gee. Can I just take the abbreviated class? Can I have the three-day version? I already know all the answers. 
Why 40 days? Because it was 40 years in the desert. <laughs> okay, in closing, because I, 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 I feel like I need to go back to my room and pray. <laughs> okay. Jesus ate nothing the whole time, and he got very hungry. No kidding. Verse 3, the devil said to him, the devil spoke to Jesus. Okay, he said, now this is, this is where we don't get it, okay? This is deception. If you don't get this, you're, you're going to need to camp on this. I, I mean, I have a bunch of cows I got to take out. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Be patient with me, but I got to do this. Because if you don't discern who Jesus is, then you can't receive what he has. Because if Nazareth couldn't get the goods, why would you think you could? Because they didn't discern him as Messiah. They knew his dad. They knew his mom. They said, this is the carpenter's son. And all they got was a table and chairs. They didn't get healed. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. The devil, the devil, the devil with a small d. He said to the Son of God, he said, if you are the Son of God. And Jesus said to me, as he said that, I looked at him and I remembered the day that I created him. So what was the temptation? Jesus asked me, what is the temptation? The temptation is, if you are the Son of God, turn this stone in the bread. He tried to get him to opt out of why he came. To do a miracle as the son of God instead of the son of man. Yeah, come, on. come on now. If you don't get this, see where, where, where I'm going with this is you can't receive healing from me or anybody that's going to pray for you. You can't expect someone else to help you get healed if you believe that the Son of God is the only one that can heal. Because there's this thing called ministry. And God anoints those to go forth and pray for the sick, those who believe. Okay, so Nazareth didn't believe. So he couldn't do any, any major miracles there because of their unbelief. Did I mention unbelief? Okay, but what was the unbelief? What did I say? The unbelief was they did not discern him as, a son, as, a, as the Messiah. They discerned him as a carpenter's son. So all they got was furniture. Do you, do you follow me? I know you're laughing and everything, but see, this is why people don't receive healing. They don't discern who Jesus is. And so the ministry goes forth. The healing ministry goes forth after Jesus left because of this very thing. Jesus passed his test. Of course he's a son of God. That's no test. The test is, I have to throttle it back and do it as a son of man. I have to do it as the anointing is giving portion and the spirit of God is speaking and wisdom, he's only, he's listening for his, his father to say, heal, to say, deliver, to say, speak this. He had to be submissive. So that's why my friend who I flew with, she said, I have a problem. I, I just, I met her on that flight. She's, she's now a good friend of ours. But this was 30 years ago. She said, I know I'm supposed to fly with you because I need a thyroid. They removed it. So I fasted and prayed during the trip, and I said, this is what the Lord told me. He said, he said, 
you're not the one who's going to pray for her. She needs a creative miracle. She needs something that's not there. Okay, this is, listen, don't, don't get mad at me. This is not healing. Healing is working with something that's already there. A creative miracle is when you get a body part. Well, they call that working of miracles. Last time I checked, it's in the list of the gifts of the Spirit, which is given severally as he wills, not as I will. So if you have to get to a person where that's operating. So I told her, I said, you need a miracle. And I said, I pray. Now, if the gift of faith comes on me or the working of miracles comes on me during the flight, I'll finish my drink service and I'll be back to the back to pray for you. <laughs> but if not, you need to go to Benny Hinn. That's what, I, that's what the Lord told me. Because he is working in that. He's operating in that. And this was years ago. I mean, it was a long time ago. It was 30 years ago. So I never saw her again. Until one day, I was watching Benny Hinn, and she's up on the stage. Right? Right? And Benny goes like this, and she goes like this, and now she's got a thyroid. Now think about that. I don't understand. I don't understand this. But this is an operation of the Spirit. So Jesus could not operate as the Son of God. That offends most people. But he could not operate as the Son of God because he had to come as one of us in order to redeem us. He had to become one. He, he traded his divinity over and considered himself not equal with God, but became a servant if you want to bring scripture into it. So my dad, my dad, he used to say, oh, don't bring the Bible. And I'd, I'd argue with him and, oh, don't bring the Bible. I go, dad, that's like, that's all we have, you know. <laughs> if you're going to talk about Jesus and about, you know, Christianity, but he did get saved before he passed. But he used to say that, don't bring the Bible into it. I'm like, dad, you can't say that. That's like, that's, that's my manual. <laughs> okay, can I go on? Everybody got this? Okay, so... Jesus told him, no. The scriptures say people do not, the scripture says people do not live on bread alone. Now he's quoting the Old Testament. The devil took him up, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, said, I'll give you all these if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus looked at him like, have you lost your mind? <laughs> No. Don't you get it? The temptation was to come out of his assignment. He had to be the Savior. He had to be the Messiah. He had to do this to redeem us. So he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't get pulled into Satan's court and into the ring. So, Jesus replied, the scriptures say, I must worship the Lord my God and serve him only. But look what Satan says. He said, these are mine and I can give them to anyone I please. Did Jesus dispute that? Why? Because Paul said, if you want to bring Paul into it, he said that the prince of the power of the air is the God of this world. The devil is the God, the small g, God of this world. He said, you used to serve him. In fact, he said, you used to do anything he wanted you to do without resistance. But now you've been transferred into the kingdom of light. Why? Because Jesus said, you know what? We're not going to argue about this. I'm going to worship the Lord, my God, and him only am I going to serve. See, he said that as a son of man. As a son of God, there'd be like a little ash pile where Satan was. <laughs> because he had lost his mind. Okay, but false, the false doctrine is 
God is in control. Well, is he really? Well, how many babies died in the womb today? How, how much have you been robbed today? Right. If God is in control, why is all this stuff still happening? Right. Why are people that are evil allowed to prosper? Because God is patient and he is not. Now listen, please don't write me. I get thousands. Every time I say this, I get thousands of people like just all upset, their heads spinning and there's stuff coming out of their mouth. <laughs> And they're saying, I'll get you my pretty. And I'll get your little dog too. No. It spins around because they don't want you messing with their little glass house. Right. Well, it's already been messed with. It's probably got the delta or the E. It's been messed with. Okay. The devil has come in. Why has he come in? That's why we're here this weekend. We got to pull down every false thought. Make it obedient to Christ. Okay, so Jesus, Jesus didn't dispute. But Jesus knew if he obeyed the Father and fulfilled the mission that the kingdom would be his again. But he would give it back to man. Because last time I checked, man had it before it was stolen. Okay? I'm going to buy this CD. This is really good. Okay. All right. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point in the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, here we go. Are you going to keep doing this? If you are the Son of God, jump off. And he quotes scripture this time. Oh, yeah, the devil quotes, quotes scripture. He's actually a better than most Christians. He studies more than most Christians, but he's getting old. He's very forgetful. <laughs> Jesus responded, you must not test the Lord your God. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. And it's interesting in, in, in some of the, uh, of the gospel accounts, it says that angels came and ministered to him, which proves to me that he wasn't operating as a son of God. Because the Son of God doesn't need angels to minister to him. Doesn't need any encouragement because he is who he is. Okay, so why, why do we not expect angel visitation when we get tempted? I'm getting visited right now. I literally have angels behind me right now. Right now, I have, I have several around me right now. Why? Because I've been tempted. I've been tempted to slap some people. <laughs> But just like the Western movies, the gunslinger, if they walk away from the fight, oh, they're coming back. They're just going to reload. So isn't it funny, like, oh, oh I'm, going, I'm going through a, a time right now. I'm being tempted, being, you know, I'm going through some things, being tested. Well, have you had your angel visitation yet? Uh, you know, that's a little, that's a little extreme. Oh, really? And what you're going through isn't? Come on. I mean, do you, th do you think after what we've gone through that there are millions of angels on the earth right now wanting to bandage you up and minister to you? Isn't that interesting that we expect the next Greek God disease, but we don't expect angel visitation? I mean, if Jesus needed it as the son of man, then don't you think we need a, a couple of them? Like multiple, back to back, all through the night. From now until Jesus comes back. Because that's what I'm going to expect. I'm expecting angels to come and minister to me because I've just about had it. I've just about had it. And I'm starting to pull down false ideas. Like I, we have been at Warrior Notes. That's why we're training the students. We're, we're getting them to yank down all these false ideas that have nothing to do with good news of the gospel. It has to work anytime, anywhere. That's why Jesus came. The gospel has to work in any country, in any situation. It has to. Because it's good news. Okay. Um, 
Okay, after this, which is getting to my point for this one, for, for point number one, is when Jesus returned to Galilee after that, he returned to Galilee, he was filled with the Spirit's power. Okay, so after you go through a time of testing and temptation, it should have improved you. That's good. That's good. If you stayed a servant, if you stayed humble, if you didn't blame God, if you forgave, if you didn't get offended, if you don't smell like smoke, if you're not edible to the devil and he, he doesn't seek to devour you because you're not edible. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, he, he, he went, this is when, this is when um, we miss, I'm going to show you what you miss. Not all of you, but I missed it. Reports, okay, so he's just been in the desert, all this happened. I mean, he's tight-lipped about it. Think about it. He's not talking. Who was with him? Nobody. But look what happens. He came out of that filled with the Spirit's power. This is in verse 14. Okay, reports about him spread quickly throughout the region. Over what? He went in the desert by himself, hungry. Does anybody follow this? Okay, so Jesus comes out full of power and it spreads quickly about him. He taught regularly in the synagogues. Oh boy. And was praised by everyone. Oh, that, do that doesn't go over well with religious people. Who is this person? One of the synagogues he was preaching, they had never had a demon problem until Jesus showed up. <laughs> the guy's sitting on the front row. They were, he's full of demons, and the demon's like, oh, they're going to read the scripture now. Oh, here's my favorite part. They're going to sing. They're going to sing the Psalms. Not even, not even bothered. If you notice, demons weren't even mentioned very much in the Bible until Jesus shows up, or David, who was, David was the predecessor. He was the one where the, the, the line of David was the one where the Messiah came. So King David was a type of Christ, okay? So David, when he played the harp, demons left. You know, Jimi Hendrix, he played, and I don't know, maybe demons stayed. But they, or they came. I don't know. He's a good guitarist. But, you know, if you're not playing by the Spirit with an anointing, you know, that music could have an effect on you that's not good, okay? So that's what we don't, we have to be careful. Okay, so David played and demons left. Jesus preached and demons started getting upset. Why? Because the temperature just went up in the room. And then it went up in the region. So all of a sudden, this guy is not comfortable anymore. And he's the biggest giver. <laughs> he's in the front row. Well, you didn't get the front row unless you're the biggest giver. That's why I'm putting single moms up here. I'm flipping tables everywhere I go. Amen. Okay. These single moms are higher in the kingdom than most people think. They're the ones that are fighting the battles and winning by themselves when the church should be helping them. We're, we're going to help them. Okay. He taught regularly in the synagogues and people praised him except for the demons. They got really upset. Okay. He's verse 16. That, it doesn't say that in there. I just added that. When, when he came to the village of Nazareth, oh boy, here we go. His boyhood home. He went as usual, as usual, as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. Why did he go to his hometown? Well, let's find out what he read. He opened the scroll to the prophet Isaiah 
And he found chapter 61. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He didn't say, I'm the son of God. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is the messianic scripture that every Jew knew describes the Messiah when he comes. It's a whole chapter. It's very long. And um, if, you, if, you, if you don't start smiling, I'm going to read the whole chapter. Okay. All right. We need to get happy in here. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. Okay. He didn't say I'm the son of God. I am. So step back or you're going to have to fall. He said, the spirit of the Lord is on me. He, as a servant, a subservient, he's saying the anointing is on me to bring good news to the poor. Well, think about it. Don't take too long. But what would be good news to the poor? Okay, time's up. All right. He has sent me to proclaim that the captives be released. That's good news. He's announcing that the blind will see. That's good news to the blind. Okay? The oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. It's not will come. So one of the things that, that I want to slap is every year there's people that prophesy about, you know, this is a year of favor. And I'm thinking... <laughs> And I'm thinking, I, I don't know what they could add to the favor of the Lord for this year that we already haven't had since Isaiah <laughs> fell face flat and said, I'm undone. You know, like I, I, don't under, I don't know what Isaiah could add to what happened to him. I don't know how Moses could add anything to what happened to him in the cliff of the rock. It's pretty, it's pretty much better just to bow out. So, you know, Isaiah, after writing that, he just wrote another five chapters and he's done. <laughs> so he's, he's announcing this in his home church and you're wondering why you're not honored well they know you listen to this yeah see people are starting to get it it's by revelation see spirit's healing people right now he, he's proclaiming all this in his hometown, knowing that he is about to get in trouble. Like, okay, Jesus, here's your box of nails and your hammer. Get to work. I'm serious. That's what they're thinking. He's the son of David. He's the Messiah. If you read this whole chapter, it's prophesying not only for the next thousand years, He's, he's, prophesying, he's prophesying into eternity. Jerusalem and Israel is pronouncing that this is the Messiah and all these things are going to be first. It says, even one verse says, all the foreigners will come and want to serve you in your country. Well, that ain't happening yet. <laughs> and how he's going to prosper Israel and Jerusalem. Okay, so Jesus, like, shows up at his home church. And this is what he does. He rolls the scroll up. He hands it back to the attendant and sits down. But he really goes too far. He says, all the eyes are looking at him. And he goes, this scripture has been fulfilled in your midst. No, he yelled it. And the pastor's looking at him. <laughs> Mary and Joseph are looking at him. I'm telling you, I'm helping you receive your healing right now. He said, it says that he could not perform many major miracles in his own hometown because of their unbelief. What was the unbelief? The unbelief was that they did not discern him as the son of God, the Messiah. The Messiah came to restore everything. Okay? That is why we don't receive our healing. 
We don't see him as our replacement. He took it upon himself so that we don't have to, period. That is why I've spent, in the last two years, I've spent two nights up all night saying no to every Greek god that came. I had to stay up twice all night or I would have got it. I'm telling you, it crouched like a lion and jumped on me twice. And I've never got it. And it's not because I'm a good boy. It's not because I went to heaven. It's because Jesus took his stripes, my stripes, upon his back. Period. Okay, this is, this is why we get healed. Period. It's not because you're good or you're bad. It's, it's, not, it's not because you go to heaven or not go to heaven. It's not because you fast or pray. It's because of what he did. He already did it. The favor of the Lord was announced in Isaiah's day, which was thousands of years before Jesus. He prophesied it. Jesus fulfills that. He says, it's been fulfilled in your midst. What? The favor of the Lord. This is the year of the Lord's favor. Okay, so 2022 is not, is not the beginning of the, you know, this year, it's, oh, we're, we're going to see the Lord's favor. It's like, okay, what about Isaiah? What about Jesus? Maybe you ought to like say everybody's going to get a brand new car this year or something because, well, no, you're not going to do that because there's a chip shortage. You're going to have to wait for that. You're going to have to buy a used car for twice what a new car costs. Or you can have the car without the chip and you can sit and make motor noises in your garage. No, 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 no. The Lord's favor is, is eternity coming in the flesh and walking amongst us and we beheld him. And we embrace him, and he gives us the power to become sons of God. I mean, if you want to bring scripture into it. This is the gospel. It's good news. Even if you're upside down, if you read it upside down. Whether you're on keto or Atkins or Fatkins, it doesn't matter. This still works. It doesn't, I'm telling you, the solution to everything you're going through is in Christ. But it's because he came, not because you were good enough. The Kathy shares this all the time. She was waiting until she knew that someday she'd become a Christian. <laughs> but she was waiting until she was good enough. Like God had to do it. But see, God's already done it. So when she re heard the gospel, she received it. She confessed with her mouth what was in her heart, and she believed, and she was saved. She, she allowed God in to her life, and then the miracles started happening. Like right now in this room, the, the faith has gone through the roof on the first night. I've never experienced this like this. Amen. Faith. Okay. All right. So here is the fake news. The fake news says, isn't this Joseph's son? We've researched it. We have all the dirt. And half of it we had to make up because we couldn't find it. Okay. So then he said, he, you will undoubtedly quote me this proverb, physician, heal yourself. But wait a minute. What, what's going on here? Then he said, you will undoubtedly quote me this proverb physician heal yourself meaning do miracles here in your home in your hometown like those you did in Capernaum but I tell you the truth no prophet is accepted in his own hometown why did he just say all that this is for our benefit he is he has taken the snake by the neck here okay he is he's exposing them he's already telling them what they're going to say He's saying, you know, they always said, you have a demon. You need to heal yourself. Didn't they? His mom and his brothers came one time. And they said, he's gone mad. They came, they came to do a retrieval. To do, what do they call that? Intervention. Intervention. <laughs> they try to do it privately, but... The media showed up, so they, they made, it was a scene. 
And of course, Jesus wouldn't come out. Now, very carefully, can you promise me, move towards the edge of your seat and act really excited. Okay, just nudge a little bit. Okay. We, gotta, we, gotta, we can't skip over these hard parts of these verses. We do this. I want to read something that's very hard. Like, what is Jesus doing here? He says this. He's like calling them on everything. He says, certainly there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time. Why is he saying all this? When the heavens were closed for three and a half years, which was how long his ministry was, and a severe famine devastated the land, yet Elijah was not sent to any of them. What he's saying is, I'm led by the Spirit, and I was told to come here. But I wasn't, I'm not sent, he said, I'm, I'm not sent to the, to the Samaritans. Yeah, but we'll just take the crumbs off the floor like the puppies. He says, you have great faith. The centurion, he wasn't sent to Rome. He wasn't sent to the Gentiles. He said, but if you just say the word, it'll be done. He said, you have great faith. It's only two times he said that. They were even in the covenant, those two. The only ones. He said, I've been sent to the lost tribe of Israel. I've been sent to the children but they did not receive him. But Gentiles received. Outside the covenant. This is what he's saying. He's saying that right here. I'm being led by the Spirit. And God's telling me where to go. But you all are messed up. He's saying you all. You all. I've been sent to you. And you're not discerning who I am. And what did he do on the night before he was crucified? He looked over Jerusalem and he said, how I long to gather you together. He said, but you would not have it. He said, you didn't discern your day of visitation. You didn't discern your day of visitation. That's what happened in Nazareth. They didn't discern their day of visitation. They didn't discern who Jesus was. But yet he would walk down the street and you would hear this cry. Son of David, not, not Jesus. Son of David, not son of Joseph. He said, they would say, son of David, have mercy on me. And they would get healed. Why? Because when you said son of David, you were saying Messiah. Yes. You all getting this? Yes. Okay, I got to kill these cows. Okay, certainly... There were, there were all these people, and, G, and Elijah wasn't sent to any of them except for that widow, okay? He was sent instead to a foreigner. This is exactly what happened with those two people, the Samaritan and the, the centurion, okay? Many in Israel had leprosy at that time, but, but Elisha, now he goes to Elisha, only one was healed, and he was a Syrian, Naaman. But there were many people who had leprosy. But Elisha was only sent and only healed that person who was not part of the covenant. Why would Jesus do that? He's trying to show them that it's by faith. What is faith? It's not all this stuff that you have to do every day or else you're not going to build your faith. Right. It's not what you think. Faith is settling it with God, turning in your sword... Laying down saying, you know what? I'm not getting up until you pick me up and go with me. I'm not getting up until I get healed. I'm not getting up until I'm delivered. I, I'm not getting up until my bills are paid. It's, it's, that, it's that centurion faith. It's that Samaritan woman who said, you know what? I'll take the crumbs. If your people don't want them, I'll eat the crumbs off the table. See, that passion, that drive to, that I want God or just take me. This is, this is the thing that every person I've ever studied, all the generals, all the moves of God, every last one of them, even if a dog was involved, I studied. This is the passion that was in every one of those yes. people. They yes. got it. They got it by conquest. Yes. They got it because they discerned that God was working through Jesus Christ. And that Jesus is here tonight because there's more than two of us here. 
He's here confirming his word. And people are being healed. And the reason why is we have faith, but the faith is not trying to not doubt. Stop wasting all your energy fighting doubt. Feed your spirit with the Messiah. Feed your spirit, building yourself up, knowing that God cannot lie. And that Jesus did come. And if he needs vis angel visitation, then you do too. If, if, he, if he got persecuted, then why are you bothered with it yourself? Of course they're going to hate you. They hate him. They, Jesus... Jesus went around doing good and healing everyone who was oppressed to the devil for three and a half years only, and they killed him. We've got people that are in office for 47 years, and they're still alive. They're still alive. And they don't even get sick. So how can God be in control of this world? You see, every person received the evidence of their faith through conquest. They didn't give up. Why? Because there is no choice. There is not a plan B. I don't want the acceptable or the permissive will of God. There's only one will. And that is what my father has in his heart that is passionate for. My father has a passion to see this age wrapped up with a glory over the body of Christ. How do we build the body up? We, we allow the fivefold ministry to stop prophesying to bring down nations and leaders and start to turn to the body like Ephesians yes. chapter 4 yes. says. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it, the fivefold ministry of the church is strictly according to Scripture. If you don't want to bring in Scripture, then you go ahead and you be apostle somewhere else. Start your own YouTube channel. <laughs> An apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, strictly according to Paul, is set in the church by God himself. Not by those people. Not by any person. They're set by God, it says. In any language it says that. Even the nearly inspired version gets it right. <laughs> the NIV. <laughs> they are turned toward the body and they're speaking to the body, building them up in the faith into unity, into maturity. So maturity and unity and faith are used as the assignment for the fivefold. Not prophesying nation's doom, not prophesying America's doom. Because really, there is no, on the Lamb's Book of Life, America is not listed there. You're listed there. And every believer in every country is listed there. Every person that is listed in the Lamb's Book of Life. Countries are not listed in the Lamb's Book of Life. God doesn't save countries. I mean, you know, don't write me. God doesn't save countries. He saves people. Come on now. Israel rejected him. So how can you say he came, for, he came to redeem Israel? He did redeem Israel. He redeemed us all. But they rejected him. How many people got healed? I mean, the man at Gate Beautiful didn't get healed. And Jesus walked by there almost every day. But the disciples were walking by there. They had silver. They had no silver, no gold. But such as they have, be healed. And he was healed. Okay, Jesus walked by there. Come on now. Everybody thinks that Jerusalem is this, I don't know what they think. But when you get there... It, it's not that, it's not as big as people think. It's big, but it's, it's beautiful, but it's not, I mean, I was surprised. In a jet fighter, I could get across there in like maybe 35 seconds. I mean, you go to any Middle East country in just a, a matter of a minute, you can do it upside down without afterburner, just like in, in just in military thrust. Upside down, wouldn't even get a snack on the flight. <laughs> kind of like today, you know? <laughs> So it's not like really big. I got to go on. I want to stay on this, but I, I got to go on. Verse 
Verse 20 says, when they heard this, the people in the synagogue, the, the religious people, were furious. That's what it says. Verse 29 says, jumping up, they mobbed him. And they forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him over the cliff, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Okay, this is in his church. This is in his home church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even Mary watched them do it. Oh, yeah, Mary. Mary and Joseph were there. They took him to the brow of the hill to throw him off and kill him. This is in three and a half years of ministry, healing, doing good, and they killed him. They killed him because he was right. They killed him because he fulfilled his mission, but they were wrong for killing him, but they fell into the trap because Satan according to Paul, said, if those powers would have understood, they would not have crucified the king of glory. Okay, so the whole thing was for us. Now, here's the thing. You're sitting here. You're thinking about, well, you know, man, it was, the traffic was bad and I overpaid for my meal. Oh, did I tip the waiter? You're thinking all that. Trust me, when you get to heaven, everything that was said tonight, because I'm just quoting scripture, and anybody, I can, I can get Caesar up here, he can play the bass, and he can quote scripture. He could do this. But see, when you get to heaven, it's not going to be if you tipped a waitress or if the traffic was bad. You're not going to remember any of that. What you're going to remember was, is you heard the word of God, and what you're going to remember is if you judged yourself, immediately in this meeting or if you delayed that and now you're going to be judged by the word. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to go to hell. But you're going to go through an audit and it, it's not pretty. Right. It's painless though because Jesus just stands there and says nothing when you stand before him. See, we don't go to the judgment that the world goes to if we judge ourselves. So we're in a different room with a different court, Amen. and it's rigged. Amen. But you will go through an audit, and you'll stand there. And in a flash, everything will be shown to you that you did. Not the bad stuff. You'll be shown what you did with what you were given. Not with what your neighbor was given or the evangelist that comes every 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 couple months to your church. They're not going to be there. All the people you're mad at, they're not going to be there. All the people that robbed you, all, all, the, all the pastors that didn't use you when you were very well gifted and they neglected you in any way. You just got to let it go because they're not there. None of that stuff's mentioned. You're going to see what, you're going to see in a flash all the things you did. And in a flash then, Everything will be played back again over that, and you will see what you could have done. And it's like that. And it's an audit that would take years, and it takes less than a second. And then you're going to stand there, and you're going to say, like I did, I could have done so much more. Because the books that are written about you are overlaid with what you did. Does everybody follow me? Can I go on? Okay, so if... If you didn't receive your healing tonight, it's not, let's just forget about doubt and fear. Let's, let's just concentrate, did you receive the grafted word which is able to save your soul? Which is what Peter said. Well, what, why would it say save your soul? Because that's the word, psych, the word we get psyche or psychology, the, the mind. Why did he say saving of your soul? Because Paul talked about the saving of your spirit. Well, it's because the word is used there because the soul needs to be transformed according to the renewing of your mind, which Paul talks about in Romans chapter 12. Okay, so if you allow your mind to be changed, 
which is the word transformed. If you change your mind, that's called repentance. Repentance is changing your mind and changing your focus back in the direction you should go. You change your mind, it changes your direction. So you go toward your healing tonight by changing your mind. That's good. Let it sink in. Okay. All right. Right after this, Jesus cast out a demon. People were amazed, and there was the man sitting in the, in the synagogue, front row, biggest giver, on the board, manipulating everything. And a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit, cried out, shouting, go away. Well, why? Well, because Jesus shows up and he's ruining the whole thing. He's ruining the party. Everything was fine with the church until Jesus shows up. <laughs> think about it. Why do you think trouble starts? The temperature starts to rise. Jesus showed me this. He said, Kevin, you have to become hot. You have to teach others to be hot. Everybody that ever did anything for God had to become hot themselves. Well, you had to get that fire from, from the altar. It's not from this world. It has to be introduced to an individual who carries it through a whole generation. But think about the whole generation getting on fire. Well, that would be the end. That would be the end right there. Okay? All right. So, he told me, he said, when Paul was shipwrecked, to, he's, he's kind of flipped out. So, he thought, I'll go look for some firewood. Help out a little bit. Probably had to get away so he could make a call on his cell phone. You know? <laughs> he picks up all this wood. He's carrying it back. And Jesus said to me, that snake was in there the whole time, just like it's in your relative, your church. I don't know. It shouldn't be in the church, but it was in that church. It was in that church. The first assembly of Nazareth. The first assembly in Capernaum. It doesn't have to be first assembly, but you know. <laughs> Pastor Frigidaire. <laughs> 32 degrees. No, it doesn't have to be this way. This is not the fivefold that's in the Bible. They all receive their giftings and are, are set in the church by God Himself to build up the body, which means they have to be hot. Okay, they have to receive their fire from the other realm. Well, the demons know that. If you have fire from the other realm, from the altar of God, which is burning right now as we're sitting here, freezing in this room. <laughs> it's burning when a church is cold. It's burning when your prayer meeting is cold. When the Spirit of God is not manifesting... There's no freedom because the spirit of the Lord, wherever he is, there's liberty. If there's no liberty, there's no spirit. Let's just do the math and let's stop spray painting it, airbrushing it out and saying, it's going to be okay. Well, obviously it's not okay after the last two years because the church didn't pass its test. Okay. Psalms 91 has been in effect for a long time. Okay, so it's my body, my choice. All right, so I can do whatever I want with it. But then they're going to make you do something you don't want to do? Okay, well, it's the same thing with separation in church and state. So no, no, you can't talk. You can't talk about this and that in the church. Okay, so then they can come in and say, well, you can't talk, you can't meet. Wait a minute, I thought it was separation of church and state. See, I just showed you something because Jesus... Jesus, whenever he stood up for righteousness, they wanted to throw him over the brow of the hill. Whenever he announced anything that was be beyond this realm here, the devils got stirred. 
people started hating him, but they were like really happy with him. But see, everything in that church was fine until Jesus came and preached in it. And the demons started to manifest. It says it right here. So Jesus is standing there and the thing's shouting. It's never happened before. Church very large, very prosperous. It's on Christian TV. <laughs> Everything's fine. And this man, the board member in the front row, biggest giver, says, go away. He says that to Jesus. We got a problem here, okay? Now, this is what the demon said, which the people don't know it's a demon. They think it's, you know, the board member. He says, why are you interfering with us? You ever heard that? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? Dude, what have you been smoking? Well, <laughs> oh, think about it. Like, Jesus is like not even paying attention to him. And the guy's all upset. You come to destroy us? Even the pastor now is probably like a little nervous. Like, what's this guy saying? Have you met before? Have you met this Jesus? Okay, so Jesus. This, this translation says, be quiet. He said, Jesus said, shut up. <laughs> well, you don't say that to a board member. He's, obviously, Jesus doesn't get invited back. I don't even think he got his offering. <laughs> shut up. Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the demon did not listen to Jesus. Instead, he threw the man down. Now, think about this. When Jesus would address demons, they wouldn't leave right away. They would throw a fit and tear the people, throw them into water, throw them in the fire, let them roll down. They would go dead. And you're wondering why things don't happen right away when you address them. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I know who you are, the Holy One of God. That's the only good thing he said. Okay, so Paul throws the wood on the fire and the serpent comes out and bites him. Well, the serpent was there the whole time. And it was always in your relative and it was always in your church if they let it in. It was in this church. I haven't said anything wrong. Don't get offended with me. You think a demon is going to go... Just because you got hired at your job? That demon looks at you and says, you're trespassing. You have to understand that demon is not going to go unless you're rougher with him than he is with you. You're saying, be quiet? Jesus said, shut up. You want a piece of me? You think you can take me? You with the face. What are you looking at? You're like, can we have, hey, let's just go have a cup of coffee. And we can talk about this. We can talk. No, we're not talking. Jesus is driving out devils. That's a little different than like talking to them and saying, you know what? I think you should leave. No, he doesn't do that, does he? Okay, so why are you being tolerant with disease? It's an entity. Jesus commanded sickness to go. Yes. Now, you would, bl you would blame Peter's mother-in-law that she didn't get healed right away. But Jesus laid hands on her and it left that very hour, not that very minute. Well, it's not Jesus' uh, power or lack of. It took an hour within the hour some people had to go to the high priest and show themselves with that leprosy still there. After Jesus prayed, go show yourself to the priest. Some, some people, when they were healed, they were partially healed. Jesus said, what do you see? Or Jesus said, what do you see? I see, I see men, they're like trees. 
That's not good. That's like 2070. We need 2020. <laughs> and he reapplied the power. He reapplied. He prayed for them. Can you believe that? Twice. It wasn't Jesus' inability. It was the people's ability to discern who he was and that he was anointed by God. He had already announced it. He said, this is, this is me. I'm fulfilling this scripture this day. Well, you know, they were expecting something else. As, as, as you can see with the way Judas dealt with it and Peter, they were expecting someone to come and drive Rome out because uh, they read the whole chapter. They knew the whole chapter 61. The whole chapter talks about everything that will come after the Messiah comes. It starts with the deliverance and the, the healing and uh, the provision. But if you keep reading it, it looks like dominion. And it looks like the uh, heavenly Jerusalem is coming down and we're going to rule and reign. As it says, mentions priests and kings in that scripture in, in 61. Don't make me read it to you. <laughs> but it's part of the fulfillment of the mess messianic um, uh, the messianic assignment yeah. that Jesus brought is it goes from him coming those three and a half years and it goes the whole way into eternity and they expected Jesus to do that all yeah. in three and a half years. So when Judas saw that he wasn't going to do it because, you know, they, he gave him the chance on, the, on, the, on Palm Sunday. So he rode down and he was supposed to go set himself up and announced that he's the king. And they were like, Hosanna, blessed he's come to the name of the Lord, because they know 61 of Isaiah. But it was, they, they had unrealistic expectations because they couldn't read the calendar of God. Wow. Because the calendar of God is seasons and cyclical, right. and it's stacked with revelation, and it's redundant to the point where God can't fail. So there's all this stuff built in so that no matter what happens at the end of the age, it still happens exactly when he determined it, but it looks like it was random at times. Yeah. We had a couple of diseases in between. Right. Huh. And a couple of, of famines and a couple of numbskulls in office and things like that, you know. Okay. <laughs> and it's been happening for years. We just got to the place where we're done. Okay, why are we done? Because righteousness and justice must reign. As a Christian, the kingdom must come on the earth as it is in heaven. God's will must be done on the earth as it is in heaven. See, this generation has that rod of righteousness in them, the scepter of righteousness. And it says in Psalms 110, he's going to send that scepter into the camp of your enemies. Well, that, if that happens, which it has, then you're going to have an attitude. You're not going to. Let, see, faith is discerning the season of the favor of the Lord. It's discerning that Jesus has come. You have great faith because you are under authority and you understand authority. Listen, you don't have to figure out what faith is. The centurion equated faith with authority, and Jesus didn't dispute it. He said, you got great faith. But all the centurion said was, listen, I understand authority. All you got to do is speak the word, and it'll be done. I'm under authority. I understand authority. I'm over others. I tell them what to do. They listen to me. I'm told by Caesar what to do, and I do it. Just say it, and it'll be done. He's, Jesus equated that statement to great faith. So you don't need more faith. You need understanding about authority. And if God has already spoken over you, which he has, and I, I hear him say it all the time because he sings songs of deliverance over you. If you want to bring in um, Zephaniah chapter 3, he's singing songs over you of deliverance. He's singing over you. And he might just mention healing too because he is. So he's singing over you, mentioning healing. So he's already spoken for you over you. So he's speaking over all of us right now healing. Now I just got enveloped in a glory cloud and I'm going to have to finish. I'm sorry. I, I we'll, come, we'll come back tomorrow. The glory just came in. I can't see right now. 
When I said that, this whole place got enveloped in glory. And the time has come. So I speak healing. I announce the heal, that you are healed. Receive your healing right now. Take your medicine. Take your joy. Take your medicine. Take your joy. This is not an exercise. This is the real thing. Come on. Joy. Dear Lord, you've done it again, Lord. Oh, I've sent my word and I've healed you. I've sent my Jesus and healed you. You shall live and not die. You shall see the glory of God in the land of the living. You shall finish your race with joy. You shall walk the paths that I have chosen for you. I've numbered them. Take the next step. Don't hesitate to enter into my glory. There's fire in here. No devil should deserve to be in here right now. Every devil must leave in Jesus' name. All the oppression, every spirit of depression, every suicidal spirit, I command you to go in Jesus' name. If they won't say it in a mega church, I'll say it in this hotel. I'll cast devils out. I'm not afraid to cast devils out. You don't need to be tormented anymore. You want to sit there in your service and eat icing all service? <laughs> Pass the steak. Every revival, every time that God moved is because someone stood up and said, you know what? This is ridiculous. This isn't even a hot plate. This isn't even a warmer. And he brings up, every revival has brought out a blowtorch. says, you want to see fire? I'm reminded of that guy on YouTube. He had had it with the snow. He just got a blowtorch. He's out there blowtorching his driveway. 30 feet of flame, man. And all his neighbors are like, man, I always liked that dude. I always liked that dude. What? Well, what happened? See, he had it. When is enough? Let's start tonight. Your healing is imminent. Your healing is imminent. Receive you here. Okay. Okay. I, I kind of got the aircraft back so I can fly a little more. Stabilized it a little bit. I think I can do a little bit longer, but I'm very drunk in the spirit. Not on alcohol, in the spirit. Okay. You got to take your first step toward healing. And the first step is the same step. Listen, everybody listen to me. Everybody listen. The same step that you took for salvation is the same step that you take toward healing. Yes. Same step. When you stepped up and received Jesus, you received salvation. But the word salvation has many, many benefits and meanings to it. Because the word in Hebrew for salvation is Yeshua. And, and it's, it's all through the Old Testament. You shall enjoy my salvation. And it says you shall enjoy my Jesus. 
So the same person that you receive salvation from, you walk out and you go, you know what? I forgot my healing. You turn back in and you get back in line and it's the same person that you receive salvation from is the one you receive healing from. And then if you want the gift of prophecy, you go down the hallway, you end up in a line, you come back through, and it's Jesus again. <laughs> what can I do for you? Hey, haven't you been here before? Oh, yeah. I'm a hoarder. <laughs> Jesus, do you have a deal this week? Can I get all nine gifts of the Spirit for... Can I just operate in them all? No. Can I... Can I, you know, and, and what happens, what happens is, is we've complicated because Jesus said, unless you become like a child, well, a child doesn't have a theology degree and is really not going to be able to argue with you about much except that Jesus loved me. This I know because the Bible tells me so, except for the NIV because the NIV is taking out all kinds of stuff and the demons the demons have told me, do not mention that name anymore. It's very powerful. I go, well, thanks for the briefing, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then, and then they say, I talked about the blood. And they go, oh, don't mention the blood. That defeated us. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. So you just start talking about the blood of Jesus, how powerful it is. You just sing the hymns, sing the songs. You know, just go like, just go sit around, talk about the blood. Okay. So you, you approach healing like you approach salvation. You need it. And he has it. Period. A child can do this. And a child will beat you to it. Because they don't want to read the fine print. All the theologians want you to read the fine print and argue with you. Are you sure you want to do this? And, you know, this really doesn't count for now because this was just for the apostles. But we'll pray for you in your suffering. Just make sure you always send your tithe in if you're going to be sick. Because they're more concerned about money. Come on now. When did Jesus ever take an offering? Well, what level was he operating? Oh, he was the son of God. No, he wasn't. He was the son of man. But there was always money going out of that bag. But there was, it never recorded that any went in, but you know that it was going in. Why? Because he had people, according to scripture, there were people that gave to him, that supported his ministry. And it's mentioned who they were. Yeah, it was, it was women. Now, it's not wrong to take an offering, but what I'm trying to show you is there is another level, and that level, no devil will touch you. The reason why is you have centurion faith. So you, Jesus didn't push the crowd, didn't pull on the crowd. He ministered to the crowd, and then they ministered to him. That's why Paul said, you know, I've given to you. You, you have excelled in giving and receiving. But this thing I want to mention to you. And it's for your benefit. So it can go to your account. I have everything I need. He's in jail. So your job is not your source. God is your source. Okay? So you can't, you can't choose a source because that might dry up and God might send you to a widow. Are you starting to see the, how God works? Okay, so why, why wait? Just receive your healing. It's the same person. You received your salvation by faith. You're saved. 
It's no different to receive your healing. The, the problem is, is that you're looking at your symptoms and they get bigger than your God. The glory cloud's still here. I'm just getting good at wa- operating it. <sighs> Hi, Tony. Tony, come up here for a second. Do you got the mic? Underneath. underneath. How far underneath? Okay. <laughs> Is it on? It's on? Okay. All right. Now, I want to show you something, how fast God could work. This man is Tony Kemp. Ready? Okay. The Lord set it up so that Jesse Duplantis was told by God, this is your son. He said, take him to TBN, call Jan Crouch. I went to Jan Crouch. We had a show with Jesse Duplantis. Ryan watched that show and told Sid, we've got to have this guy on. Now, all I did was, was hide in my closet with Kathy. We kissed, but we were fasting and praying. And we did nothing except seek God for years and years and years. And God started to move on people that could do something about it. Okay, so Ryan here is working for Sid Roth and tells Sid, you got to see this TBN show. So I, I am asked to be on the show. I do the show. And then that was October 6th. And in December, that was 2016 of December, December uh, of October. October 6th, we recorded it of 2016. In 2017, well, 2016, December, a couple months later, it aired, I believe. And... The interest in what I was saying was so strong. But see, it's because I was just telling the truth. I mean, I was just Kevin. You know, I'm a flight attendant. I'm just telling you, this is what happened to me. I waited 13 years before I even spoke about it and wrote a book. Okay. They call me. They say, there's never been a show like this. So I, go, I, I get off the phone. I'm like, well, this is like, this is the way it is all the time. They don't understand. Me and my wife will live this way the rest of our life no matter what. But I was sitting there on my laptop in my chair thinking about, like, where are you taking me with this, Lord? Because I didn't even want to talk about this. I didn't want to write a book. I, didn't, I, didn't, I knew that I'd be on Sid Roth because I saw it when I was with Jesus. I saw myself with Jesse Duplantis on TBN talking about my book. I saw all this before I even met Jesse Duplantis or Sid Roth. And I sat there and I, I, I did something that was because of what was happening. I was operating at a higher level. Well, listen to me. I said on my laptop, after I talked to Ryan, I talked to Sid, I talked to Jesse, and this thing's going off, and it's Monday morning. It just went on, it just went on Daystar at 9 a.m. on Monday morning, and poof. And I sat there on my laptop, and I started praying. I said, Lord, I don't even want to do any of this. I don't want to be in the ministry. I don't want to do any of this. I am fine. I'm retired. I'm retiring. And I said, you know... I, 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 I started reflecting and thanking God about Sid Roth and about this guy named Tony Kemp that I'd seen on one of the first shows that I'd ever seen, Kathy and I'd ever seen, was this guy named Tony Kemp was a pastor. And this is what the show was about. It was about this pastor that was done with just being a pastor and nothing happening. And so he decided that he would watch every show that Sid ever put out by everything, pretty much, I don't know, that was put out. And he studied all the supernatural events that people had. And he started to flow in it. And so eventually he was on the show, and I saw that show years before. And as I was sitting there reflecting, I said, Lord, I said, Lord, this is what I said, and you can ask him. I said, Lord, I want Tony Kemp to call me, but he doesn't have my number. I said, I said, I want to talk to that man because he, this man, his life watching that show made it possible for me to believe in something. 
So I'm sitting on my laptop, and I kid you not, my phone, it says Tony Kemp. <laughs> right? And the Lord said, I said, I'm, I answered, and I said, Tony Kemp? I'm talking to Tony Kemp. He goes, I'm talking to Kevin Zerick. <laughs> right? Have I said anything wrong? That's true. Okay. That's true. So I want this man to talk to you for a few minutes, and then I, I know that he has uh, some things that he would want to minister to you. As cor uh, just, just corporately, don't come up here. Corporately. But this man is here the, to, today because the Lord just put it on his heart. We became friends. And this man is in my life because I sat in a chair. I reflected and thanked God about other people who have helped me, including Jesse DePlanis and Sid Roth, and then Ryan here, who is now my manager, and others who have just come on board. I watched Anna Warner and John Ramirez and all these people like, oh, my God, if I could just meet them. Like, you know, oh, my God, I want John Ramirez's book, you know. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to talk to Tony Kemp. I want to meet him. And look what happened. He's here. Amen. Go ahead. Just share a couple, a little bit. I love you. I love you too, man. Yeah. Amen. Let's, uh, let's give Prophet Kevin a big, big hand clap for his obedience to Jesus. You know, there are people that the Father raises up that inspire you and motivate you and encourage you and share with you the revelation of Jesus. And uh, this man of God has done that for me. Can I get an amen anywhere in the house? I, I spent 26 years of ministry and nothing supernatural happening in the area of miracles. Oh yeah. Maybe it's all 100 people saved, about 10 people healed of headaches. Seriously. Matter of fact, <laughs> this is the, um, because nothing happened, I just quit praying for people. And I, I watched Sid's program six to nine hours a day and got in the word of God. And basically, I said the same thing, Kevin. I said, it happens in the Bible. I want it in my life in ministry. And so, um, and so Jesus began to do it. And he's getting ready to do miracles in a minute. Hey. He's getting ready to do miracles in a minute. And, and, and let me show you. Hand me my, uh, no, no, I'm just going to hold this. I, I'll show you. The cloud is here. Here's what's crazy. Can I talk to you for a minute? So, um, and I, this is Pastor Keith, his good friend of mine. Uh, he remembers the woman who was in the crowd. Uh, she had been blind in her eye for 44 years, and she starts screaming. Everybody say, the cloud was there. She starts seeing. I was in Tampa, a woman who had been born blind in her eye just starts seeing. I was in Michigan, a woman just blind in her eye just starts seeing. I was in Illinois, a guy had been blind in his eye for like 30 years just starts seeing. You know, we've been in, men, in uh, services like this where, you know, 18, 20 people just, their, their ears pop open, they start hearing. You know, uh, this, can I tell you a couple of funny stories? Okay. So I'm in Missouri, and this woman's in a wheelchair, and it's during praise and worship. Everybody say, the cloud. the cloud. And she gets up out of her wheelchair, and she starts walking. So, you know, I got to find out, okay, what has happened? So I walked up to the woman, and I said, well, what happened? She said, the Lord spoke to me. So I said, well, what did he say? He said, get your butt up. <laughs> so I got up. So I'm in Dallas, <laughs> and the glory cloud comes, and there's a woman in a wheelchair. Nobody's praying for her, and all of a sudden, she gets up. Well, you know, I got to find out what happened. Apparently, a different social class. She said, the Lord spoke to me and said, rise and walk. 
right? So, woman has an arm that's four inches short. She has metal from here to here. The arm grows out four inches. The metal that's here becomes bone. She goes to her doctor who examines her and confirms it. The doctor comes to the church to see me because she also had another patient that had cancer. And this is the only time I've ever seen this where the Lord left the growth but took the cancer out. Same doctor. So she came. So a man who had been um, shot in the back still had the bullet. This was in Memphis, Tennessee, and the bullet disappeared. A man who had been shot in the leg had the bullet for 30 years. The bullet disappears. A man who um, had been in the military had shrapnel in his leg. It disappears. A man that had a bullet in his knee when he would go through security, it would go off. God took the metal out of the knee. Pain was gone. He walked through security. It didn't go off. Woman who had metal in both her ankles, loved to skate, couldn't skate because of the pain. She would go through security. It would go off. Jesus took out the metal, replaced it with bone. She went through security, pain gone. Don't go off. I can go on and on and on. Let me ask this question. Do we have any people here, you have a foreign substance in your body, and it causes you discomfort or pain? Raise your hands. Raise your hands high. Matter of fact, just stand up so I can see you good. It's, it's be nice to old people weekend. Okay, now. I want you to look at all these people, okay? Now, I want you to sit down just for a moment. Get ready to receive a creative miracle. Just get ready. Now, let me ask the next question, because Jesus is going to heal a whole bunch of people, and I'm going to show you how. It's good. real simple. Look at somebody say, it's real easy. It's real easy because the cloud is here. It's the cloud of glory. How many people have any level of physical pain or discomfort in your body? Raise your hands and wave them. Okay, a whole bunch of you are going to get healed right now. And don't blame me. <laughs> Follow my instructions. Listen to me carefully. The word has already gone forth. Right? The anointing, everybody say, the anointing is here. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. That Jesus, my Savior, Jesus, my Savior. is my healer, is my healer. And, my and my miracle worker right now. Right now. <laughs> now, listen to me carefully. Ecclesiastes 11 and 3 said, when the cloud is full, it rains on the earth. Everybody say the principle of accumulation. When the cloud is full, it empties itself upon the earth. So how you make the cloud full is you praise God because it's already done. Kevin mentioned the scripture, John 19, 30, where Jesus said, it is finished. Look at somebody say, it is already finished. Now here's the deal. You have the facts, which are your signs and symptoms of your disease. Then you have the truth. By his sufferings, you were healed. 1 Peter 2.24. Look at somebody say, by his sufferings, I was already healed. Look at somebody say, that's the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Facts change all the time. Look at somebody say, the truth ain't going nowhere. So when you believe the truth, by his wounds I'm already healed, the facts have to change. And become the truth. Look at somebody say, the facts are becoming the truth right now. Now I'm going to do something. Please listen to my instruction. Now this is hard for you who love to pray. Please listen to my instruction. I'm getting ready to pray for you. And while I'm praying for you, don't pray. Let me tell you why. Is when you're praying, you are transmitting, you're not receiving. 
I'm going to pray for you to set the moment for your healing or your miracle to manifest. Okay. Women, I'm talking to the women. Hallelujah is praying. Thank you, Jesus, is praying. Kodabasika is praying. Men, just go into your nothing box. That's the only instruction I have to go with the men. That's instruction number one. I'm serious as eternal life. Instruction number two is this. This is very important. As soon as I pray, as soon as I pray, I'm going to have you lift your hands into the cloud. Principle of accumulation. The word falls like rain. It rains what you're believing for. The prophet Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of, can anybody hear the rain? When I pray the prayer, now this is very important, please hear this. As soon as you feel your pain or discomfort decreasing, stand up. Don't wait for it to be all gone. As soon as you feel it decreasing, stand up. As soon as you feel it decreasing, I mean, you can stand up even now before I start praying because the cloud is here, it's, it's already happening. When it gets to 80%, you can just come up here, stand, face the people, and look good. Now listen, if you look ugly, we're going to send you back to your seat. <laughs> listen to me carefully. While you're... <laughs> when pain starts decreasing, stand to your feet. When it gets 86%, come up here. Metal is dissolving right now. It is changing and becoming bone right now. You'll feel pain decreasing. You'll feel mobility increase. As soon as you feel the change happening, stand up. Now bow your head. Get ready. Don't pray. It is written. Job twenty-two twenty-eight. 28. You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. The blood of Jesus speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. It is by the blood of Jesus that you are saved from your sins and healed of sicknesses and diseases and delivered from the evil one. I speak to the spirit of sickness. I speak to the spirit of illness. I speak to the spirit of infirmity and I say, come out of the body. Come out of the body. Leave the body now and leave the property. I speak to the pain and the reason for the pain. Dissolve. Dissipate. Disappear and go from the body. I speak to every foreign substance. Disappear. Become bone now. In Jesus' name. And I apply the blood of Jesus over your body. And as the blood of Jesus covers your body, the facts are becoming the truth and that you know the truth and the truth sets you free now. Jesus is healing you and giving you miracles. As soon as you feel pain decreasing, stand to your feet. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. And if you want, you can lift your hands into the cloud because it'll come quicker. <laughs> You're making contact with the cloud. That same cloud, that same cloud that was over the sons of Israel in the time of Moses, that cloud is here and it's raining. It's raining. It's raining your healing. It's raining your miracle. 
And when it gets to 80%, you just come on up here and just make a line. Jesus is doing it now. As soon as it gets to 80%, you just come on up and make a line. I'm not laying hands on you. Just make a line and face the people. Jesus is doing it. The glory of God is here. Prophet Kevin told you from the very beginning, and there's going to be a, there's already a bunch of people, your backs have been healed. In fact, some of you were being healed. You didn't even know it. Yeah, just line up. If you got to do two lines, just do two lines. And oh yeah, you can laugh your way into it also. The Bible says laughter does good like medicine. So yeah, so go ahead and receive the joy of the Lord. Jesus is doing it. Now while you're up here, you're going to go to a 90%, 100%. Jesus is doing it. I probably better stand up here, yes? Should I? Probably. You just start praising him now. As soon as you get your healing, just come on up. I'm telling you, Jesus is doing it. Kevin told you the favor of the Lord is here. Favor is falling. I said the favor of the Lord is falling. Keep praising him. God is still working. Yeah, just worship the Father, worship Jesus. He's doing it. He's doing it right now. Now, I want you to put your hands down if you're up here at the front just for a moment because I'm, I'm going to show you. Put your hands down if you're up here at the front. How many of you had a back problem and you're healed by Jesus right now? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Keep them up. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Now let me show you. If, you, if you don't mind, if you'll put your hand down. How many of you, you had a metal or a substance in your body that was causing you discomfort, and now the discomfort or pain is gone? Put your hands up. You had metal in your body. Keep your hands up. Raise them up high. Raise them up. Keep them up. I see one. I see two. I see three. I see four. I see five. I see six. I see seven. I see eight. I don't know, eight or nine, I don't know. Come on, somebody ought to give God a praise. How many of you are up here, you're 100% healed? Wave your hands right now, you're 100%. God has sent his word and healed you. You touched the cloud and the cloud touched you. 
How many of you up here and you're like 95% healed? Raise your hands. Raise your hands high. Just wave. And by the way, you'll go to 100. One of the Greek words for healing is jeomai, which means it's a progressive. Oh. Um, there's ringing or noise in the ear that's being healed. Stand up if you're in the congregation and take your healing. Or if you're he up here, wave. If you got ringing. Come on, keep your hands up, Jesus. Heal all of that right now, God, for your glory. Heal all that for your glory. If the noise in your ears is gone, wave, wave, wave. If it's, if it's gone. Come on, let's give God a praise for that. Um, I'm feeling somebody got a supernatural hip replacement tonight. Something has just happened. You got a supernatural hip replacement right now. I see one sister has got it. Anybody else get it? Wave if you feel something supernatural has happened to your hip. Let us know by a wave. I see a hand here. Anybody else? God, I see a hand over here. God just healed a hip over here. Anybody else? Anybody over there? I see a hand right here. Come on, somebody. Let's. Somebody just got a supernatural knee replacement. God just did a miracle in your knee. Where are you at? Wave at me. I don't know where you are. Wave at me. I see, so, I see hands right here. I see hands up here. Hallelujah. Start moving your legs. God's doing something. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift up your hands. Let's praise you for a minute. Let's see what else Jesus is doing here. I see fibromyalgia being healed right now. Hallelujah. It's being healed right now. It's being healed right now. If you're up here at the front and you've had problems with fibromyalgia, turn and look at me because Jesus is healing you. I'm telling you, here's one right here. Turn and look at me. So I wave at me. I see fibromyalgia being healed over here. It's out, it's out here too. Who's out here is being healed of fibromyalgia? Okay, I see those, I see that hand. I see that right there. Wave at me. Right here, somebody. Come on, let's give God a praise for that. What time do you have? What time do you have? Okay, so we need to quit. Okay. Lift up your hands. I, 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 oh. Okay, look at me. Somebody's been having chest pain, and you're being healed by Jesus. Get my attention, because God is doing it. Wave at me or something. Wave at me. Who's been having? There's one right there. Who else? There's another one right there. Who else? I see somebody over here. God is healing you. Right over here. Wave at me if Jesus is healing. Okay, I see you. Somebody right here. Somebody right here. You're being healed right now. There's heart healing. There's lung healing. Right now. Jesus is doing it. Let's give God a big praise. Now listen, I know if we were to take testimonies, we would hear some amazing testimonies, but it's like 925. <laughs> and we want you to come back in the morning. So give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. We...
we are going to be back. Uh, Kevin's actually going to have worship at 930. So the doors open uh, at about 845, 9 o'clock, somewhere in there. And uh, make sure if God healed you, and even if he didn't, you go out of here walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. I just got to fix my ear. Check one, two, three, four, five.